Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to my podcast. This is episode number eight, titled How I Arrived into the Real Estate Business. And I want to remind you again to leave your comments and ask your questions, and most importantly, subscribe so all of these episodes will come directly to you. And also, I would like for you to meet the Fisher Realtors team, jfisherrealtors.com, and meet the Fisher Realtors team. Now, at the end of episode number seven, my good friend, Beverly Yakes, she texts me to remind me that our music teacher, Mr. Elick, at the Richmond Union High School, he had us a singing at his church. I guess he thought we sound pretty good. And in addition to that, he also had us to perform at a high school senior ball there in Arenda. Uh, Beverly, thank you again. And keep in mind that Beverly Yates, she was also a member of the Uniques of Singing Group. So Beverly, thank you for reminding me. You know, our minds get a little slower as we get older. And also, my good friend Lee Timmons, he actually left a few comments at the end of episode number seven. And his comments were that they were all positive. And he asked a question, and the question was, uh, how well, what inspired me to go into the real estate after uh, being into barbering and into uh, clothing? And that will unfold as we uh, move forward. But he also called me to tell me what he did not like. And, and I really love Lee. He didn't want to embarrass me in front of you, but I, I feel compelled to bring it out because he had a very important uh, point. And that was that if you look uh, to, down to uh, the right, you will see my good friend uh, Donnelly Thompson. And he was left out. He was part of that championship team winning the ACL, ACAL championship, going 24 wins and not one loss. Donnelly Thomas, uh, Thompson, I, I failed to mention, uh, at the end of that. And later on, Donnelly, he, he married his childhood uh, sweetheart, Eleanor. As a matter of fact, Eleanor is running for a seat on the Richmond City Council as we speak. And also, he reminded me, if you move to the left of Donnelly, the next, next guy you would see would be that of James Moore. He also was on that team and I failed to mention his name. So I want to get that right. Thanks to uh, you, Lee Timmons, for helping me to uh, get the things right. And for those two families who are also online uh, uh, listening and hearing and watching these episodes. Now, let's continue on with episode number eight. And I tell you, after leaving high school that became a little challenging to me. Not because of what I wanted to do, but it was because of what I could do. And so I entered into uh, Contra Costa College. I continued to uh, cut hair at home. As a, as a matter of fact, my business was growing uh, at home. And then my brother Jesse, my brother Jesse, he, he got me a job uh, working for him uh, at the Dell Money Fisheries in Point Malati. And uh, uh, that job paid uh, $1.90 an hour. 
But it was quite interesting. I learned quite a bit. I was able to work up and close with some of the largest uh, animals or creatures, whatever you want to call them in the world, then and today. What an experience I had working up and close with these animals. I mean, the largest animals in the world, from the smallest to the largest, the smallest being the orcas, which most of you would know the orcas as the killer whale. Many of you never had the opportunity of seeing these large uh, uh, whales before, but you, you had the opportunity if you were able to attend marine world. You were able to see this uh, uh, big to you whale because uh, uh, at marine whale, but no others. I had the experience of seeing at least five other whales. Now, the orcas or the killer whale was the smallest of them all. Therefore, I only worked on a few, maybe a couple, if that. And the reason being, I think, was because it was so small. You see, the Arcus killer whale, it was from 20 to 30 feet long. It was, uh, it weighed uh, like six tons. Now, if you think that's big, six tons or uh, about 12,000 pounds. Uh, the killer whale, the Arcus, was part of the dolphin family. That's the reason they were able to train it, you know, highly intelligent. But one thing that was unique, two things. One, it had teeth. They had like uh, 20, uh, three, 22 teeth on each side of the jaw with a, a total of about 54 to 56 teeth. These teeth were from four to five inches long. And the next thing they had, they had a killer instinct because I worked on another whale uh, with teeth. And this uh, whale was called the sperm whale, a big head. And I won't go into detail why they call it the sperm whale, but it had a special organ in its big head. And this whale was like 62 feet long, weighing about 130 pounds. So you can see the the difference between the length and the weight of these two whales, more money being in the sperm whale. So I worked on it most, but the, the sperm whale had teeth also. As a matter of fact, the, the teeth in the uh, sperm whale was about seven to eight inches long, but it did not have a killer instinct. This whale here would dive like 3,000 feet deep for giant squids and octopus. That's what it ate. It didn't kill other whales. But I also, the two whales, the uh, whales with teeth was the Arcus killer whale and the sperm whale. The other whales I uh, worked on, opportunity, and they were called from the Baleen family, spelled with the capital B-A-L-E-E-N, only meaning that they did not have teeth. What they had was what they called plates, and they would filter their food uh, through these plates. But they were uh, uh, twice the size. For instance, uh, the humpback whale was like uh, 46 feet long, weighing over 100,000 pounds, no teeth. Then the California gray whale, it was about uh, 49 uh, uh, feet long, weighing well over 100 and some of uh, uh, a thousand pounds. But the two largest uh, creatures, whales in the world then and today was called the finback whale. The finback whale was about 75 feet long, weighing over 200,000 pounds. And then the blue whale, I had the opportunity to work it, of working up and close. This whale was about 13 to 14 feet high it was about 90 to 100 feet long, and it weighed uh, about 330,000 pounds, living with a lifespan uh, almost to 100 years. Whereas the killer whale, the Arcus, uh, lifespan was only about uh, 25 to 30 years. So you can see, and this is the area behind me, it's in the area of where I worked in Point Melody. And I just hope and I pray that they continue to develop uh, the Point Melody. 
I would like to just explore the whole area, but this is in the vicinity of the area where I work at Dell Money Fisheries. Now, let's continue on uh, uh, with the podcast, the episode number eight. Now, I started learning how I started learning how to drive a car, and my good friend again, Lee Timmons. He allowed me or let me use his 1952 Chevrolet. And I, I just had a great deal. Lee was also one, one of my best uh, customers when I was cutting hair at home. So I want to appreciate him. You know, like I've said, God put people and things in, in our way when we are cut out for his uh, 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 purpose. Now, after saving my, I had to make a decision though. After saving uh, money, I was able to buy my own car. And what I bought, I was able to buy, buy a 1953 98 Oldsmobile. That was my first car. This was a black beauty. It was a jewel. But see, now it's decision time. I mean, uh, even though I, I enjoy uh, uh, attending Contra Costa College. Even though I enjoyed working at Dill Money Fisheries in Point Melody, uh, I had to follow my first love. And my first love was uh, cutting hair. So I had, not only had I saved enough money to uh, uh, purchase my car, but I also had saved enough money to enter into the Oakland Mola Barber College located on Broadway uh, uh, in, in Oakland, California. And I would drive my 98 Oldsmobile there. I would be there, one of the first there when the doors opened. I was driving so much that my car, every time when my car was operating, when it wasn't operating, I was catching the bus and I still would be there on time. But in the, after cutting hair at the uh, Oklahoma Barber College, I became a traveling barber because I would travel to the youngsters' homes and everything to take some of the wear and tear off of my parents' home. But after uh, a certain amount of time, the wear and tear started taking its toll on my uh, 53 Black Beauty. I mean, I found that it was breaking down with a new problem each and every week. And I would take my car to Madden's Shell Station, located there on the corner of uh, Phil and McDonald. And Mr. Madden, he would really help me because he would see I would pay him, but I, I don't think he got tired of taking my money, but he had compassion because that 5398 Oldsmobile would just break down. So what he would do, he allowed me to use his equipment. He allowed me to put the, the, the car up on the hydro, hydraulic jack. He allowed me to uh, uh, use the tools, but he would give me the proper tools and he was teaching me how to work on my own car. And I'm gonna tell you, what a blessing. And you're gonna see how these stories unfold like we say, you know, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. When we are called according to his purpose, then he will equip us, he will prepare us, and he will put people in our way to help us. So continue to watch these stories unfold because they will, it's going to step up on this arrival into the real estate business. So be with me, be with me on the next one and look at these episodes as, as they unfold. Thank you, thank you for this time.